Okay, so I got asked the other day about uh, things like the wallpaper and the dock and just customizing your version of Raspberry Pi OS. I was in the middle of doing uh, another video to do with AirPlay because that's just been added to PyKiss and I had a, an angle on that. And uh, to do it, I needed to do a fresh install of Raspberry Pi OS. And uh, so I thought I'd just sort of go through those bits really. So obviously you get you get to this screen and you hit next and you you know, choose all the options that you would on that, all your location options. Uh, and this bit's really important and you might skip past this. Uh, so you can see there's a big black border around there. Uh, this, you can do this afterwards in config.txt, uh, but uh, if you do it at the start, then you never have to do it again. So this screen does show a black border, so I'll tick and hit next. And on the reboot, it will apply that, it will apply the overscan so it will be full screen. So then you just log into your Wi-Fi. That's obviously all standard. And then it will connect to your network when you put your password in. Uh, and update software, wait a bit, because what happens is this disappears and comes back. Now in the case, there you go. So if you hit next too soon, it won't actually do an update. And it always seems to do this. So just wait, wait for it to come back, wait for it to stop messing around. Uh, there you go. So when it becomes stable, like now, hit next and it'll apply all the very latest software updates. Okay, so system's all up to date, so we can restart. Okay, so after the restart, uh, it looks like this. Now, I quite like the dock to be at the bottom rather than the top. So if we go to panel settings uh, and go bottom. I also like the icons to be much bigger. Uh, so around about 48. To make that a little bit smaller so it doesn't get cut off. I just think it looks nicer that way. Appearance. Now, I usually change my wallpaper before I do this because I want the dock to be uh, kind of matching the wallpaper. Um, but also in here, if we go to add temperature monitor and add, you can see the temperature monitor comes up down the bottom here. It's always nice to have so you know where you are, uh, especially if you haven't got any cooling. So now we can pick a wallpaper. If you right click and do desktop preferences, you can see it's on Temple at the moment, but it'll also show you where it is. So it's in User Share RPD Wallpaper. So if we want to call this up, scroll down to User, go to Share, and go to all the way down RPD Wallpaper. There you'll see all the wallpapers, and this way you can actually have a flick through them. So you can see which one is going to work for you. And there's some really nice wallpapers in there and some people don't realize that they're in there and they ask me where I get the wallpaper and it's already in there. So obviously you can choose one of those. So say for instance I chose that one which is sand. I can do that. Let's close that down. Hit OK and that's done. If I want to then customize this bar so maybe I want it to be like a gray color so it doesn't kind of it's not quite so jarring with the picture right click panel settings appearance click on solid color with opacity and then click on this box and then you can change whichever color you want it to be and I usually use the picker and I pick something from here so say for instance I want this sort of sand color hit OK and now I need to change the opacity so I can drag that up. So say for instance 131, hit OK. And you'll see that it's that's not quite enough really. So click on that again, drag it out. It depends on the colour of what you've got as to how it looks. So that now, there is a dock. Uh, it's slightly transparent and, uh, and I think it looks nice. I can also change the, uh, the font of the on-screen, uh, which I sometimes just make this bold just to make it stand out a bit more and this is here so under font under system and font just click on that you can change the font if you want but I usually just do bold and okay and it just shows up a bit nicer on the background I often put a bit of color in this um, so again it kind of stands out a bit from this theme so what I might do is go to CPU temperature monitor settings so change the background color to something slightly darker gray, but not too dark because you want to be able to see the text on it because I don't think you can change the color of the text on there. Let's pick something from here and see if that works. 
yeah, that's probably all right. Uh, and then the foreground color, so I usually just do like a nice bold blue and hit OK. And you'll start to see it as it as it heats up, it will come up, but it's not there at the moment, obviously, because my, my Pi is not working very hard. Then I tend to install uh, Raspberry Pi Imager because it still isn't installed. Uh, so you've got Diagnostics, which is a speed checker, um, but you still don't get Raspberry Pi Imager. So if you go to Preferences and Add Remove Software, this enables you to write another image to an SD card. So type Imager in here, let it search. So if we drag this all the way to the bottom, click on Imager to tick it, hit OK, and that'll install. Pop your password in, which as default is Raspberry, if you haven't changed it. Okay, so that's installed, so that should show up on here. Yeah, there's Imager. The other one I really like uh, and always use is Gparted, but you have to get that through Terminal. So, sudo apt install Gparted. I don't think it's on the add remove program, but it's just as easy to do this anyway. Hit yes. Okay, so that's Gparted installed as well. Shows up under System Tools. Uh, I also would always put PyKiss on now uh, because there's loads of things you can get through there and it's always changing. Uh, and so to do that, go to the web browser, type in PyKiss GitHub. This is the one, Jose's uh, PyKiss GitHub. And then scroll down. It's an easy bit and you're just copying some text into Terminal, which is this one. Right click and copy. Open up a Terminal, right click and paste that in. Hit return. And that's all automated, so that'll install PyKiss, which is an easy way of getting games, emulators, uh, different tweaks and programs and all sorts of things. And it should show up in, it doesn't always show up unless you restart but uh, it should show up under System Tools, there you go. So that's PyKiss, uh, which is great, and I've got some other videos on that, and also I'll put a link to Jose's site. Uh, it's definitely worth having. Uh, now, another thing I do is, back on Chromium, go up to the top bar here, and you can see that this is H264FI. So if I right-click on that, you want that enabled, but also you want to block 60 FPS video, because the Pi really struggles with 60 FPS 1080 video. I would say you're better off sticking to 720 anyway, but if you block 60 FPS, that will mean you'll overall get much better video performance on all the sites right across the board. Another step worth doing is uh, go to Vent's blog and install his tearing fix, uh, which also allows you to watch things like Netflix and various other streaming services. So Vent's blog. There we go, click on that. So you need to copy this text. And then again, we're back in terminal. Paste and return. There you go. And so then you need to reboot. So we're back in and everything's looking good. Uh, if you go to the start bar and go to internet, you'll now see that you've got Chromium Media Edition. Uh, and this, uh, again, I've got videos on this, or you can read Vent's blog, uh, which is where we copied that text from, uh, and see what it offers you. But things like Spotify and Amazon Prime and Disney Plus and various different streaming services that you can't ordinarily get on the Pi. Something else I like to add to it is NeoFetch, uh, which is like a system information tool. Uh, and all you do is put in sudo apt install NeoFetch. Now I've just done it, so this will say that it's already done. Uh, and then you just type NeoFetch anytime you want to run it. There is no sort of start program for it. You have to go into Terminal and type NeoFetch. Press Return. And there you go. So this tells us a little bit about our system. Things like uh, what version of Raspberry. Funny, it says it's running Raspberry and not Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, and then the kernel that it's using, how long it's been running, how much RAM you've got. This is an 8 gig Pi. Uh, and uh, just various different things about it. And you can see I'm running at 1920 by 1080, which is a very good resolution to run the Pi in, but you might want to run at a lower resolution if you're running games. So I generally drop down to 720 
if I'm running games, uh, especially games that are quite intensive. And so then I would go into preferences, screen configuration, configure screens, HDMI, and then drop that down to 720. Okay, so that's how it looks at 720. So I'll put it back into 1080 to carry on the rest of the video. If we also want to speed it up a bit more, we can use something called the config.txt. Now you can see here, this just describes what it is. So it's possible to modify various low level parameters of Raspberry Pi subsystems via a special file called config.txt. And it's pretty much like a BIOS on a Windows computer. So it's applying some very low level settings before it even boots up. And if you go into the article there, it explains all sorts of things you can change and it just goes on and on and on. There are a massive amount of settings. So if you're having something, audio problems or video problems or something like that, you might find that just changing something in here, if you've got an odd monitor or something like that, might be enough to fix it. So some things that I also use to speed up the Pi. Uh, so if I, I've got a network drive, uh, which is where I keep a lot of my files and information. Uh, and if I just open up my Pi one, and I've got an overclock file in here, uh, and I can apply these to the config.txt. So uh, you can see HDMI ignore, uh, that's one I use a lot, especially with the 4K TV, uh, that forces 1080. Uh, so you'll find the Pi runs really bad at 4K. Uh, and so if you want to apply that, it just means that it will straight away boot up at 1080 and you'll get better performance and it will look better overall. So if I open up the terminal and type in sudo nano boot config.txt. And so you'll see loads of text in here. It looks very confusing, but everything with a hash isn't doing anything. If you delete the hash, that line becomes active. So things like overscan and, and uh, you know uh, resolution and things like that, they're all disabled. The only thing that's on is disable overscan equals one, which is that first bit that we did uh, where you're getting rid of that black line, that black border, uh, and that's a really good one to have on pretty much everything uh, you need that in. So let's paste in the 1080 fix. Uh, that it doesn't matter that I've set this to 720, it will still stay at that, but it's just worth having in there anyway. In case you change your monitor, uh, it means that it will stay at 1080. But the other bit I want to put in, I would do this one, the 2147, but this is my 8 gig Pi, and it needs an over voltage of 8, and uh, anything over 6 will invalidate your warranty. So I'm not going to do it uh, because this is for, for most people to, to sort of you know initially set up Raspberry Pi OS. So let's paste that in. So over voltage equals six. Uh, each one is 0 0.05 of a volt you're increasing the voltage of. And because you're overclocking, so this, the Pi runs as standard at 1500, this is 2000 megahertz. And the GPU frequency I think is 600 and it's gone up to 750 with this setting. So it's gonna generate more heat uh, and you'll see that in your temperature settings, especially if you're watching video or, or games you will generate more heat with these settings, but you'll get increased performance. But if your Pi is getting too hot, uh, then what it will do is it will toggle itself back and it will run at a much lower clock speed. So play around with those settings, but at your own risk. Uh, but also I'd have a look at some of my other uh, videos on overclocking. Uh, it, it directs you to some guides which are really, really useful. So anyway, to save that setting, we do Control O, and you can see this line has shown up, file name to write. So just press Enter, and that will save that, and then Control X is the way you exit. If I now run that NeoFetch program again, just to check that that overclock has worked, and if you press the up arrow, it will go through all your previous commands, up or down, you can go through, so you don't have to keep typing it in. Press return, and now you can see that we're overclocked to two gigahertz. And so if we started watching a lot of video and things like that, you would see this temperature would start to creep up, but at the moment it's still fairly low. If I want a custom desktop, I would often just search the web. If I launch Chromium, and then I would generally, because I run my desktop at 1920 by 1080, I would just put that in, wallpaper, and then just find something that looks nice, something that you think you would like to look at on a regular basis. I mean, I do change my wallpaper quite often. I also use some of my own photos, but uh, if you were to save one of these images, so say for instance, 
that's quite nice, isn't it? So if I now sometimes when you look at the file, they don't actually show you the the proper size file, and they have so you just need to check that it is the right size. So I've I've clicked on the file. If I do save image as and then go to documents, you could put it in pictures or documents, let's say pictures actually, I usually put it in documents for whatever reason. Uh, it's a JPEG file which is fine, so it's gonna recognize that. Uh, it's called 564, I'm happy with that, doesn't matter that it's called that, and that's downloaded. So let's close this browser down, right click on anywhere on the desktop, desktop preferences, uh, picture, so remember where we put it, we put it in pictures, 564, hit open, hit OK. There you go, so that's a rather nice image, but this maybe looks a bit out of place now. So you can see the little blue creeping up. Uh, that's the blue I put in, so as the temperature goes up, that will, that will start to sort of flood up into here. So let's right click on the panel, add remove panel items, appearance, color. Let's use that picker again, and let's go with that blue but maybe make it slightly darker and the opacity, let's bring it up a little bit. Actually, I might bring that opacity down. So just play around with it, see what works for you. Uh, obviously the different colors, it gives you a preview of what it's gonna look like there. There you go, so I think that looks nice, especially on this black bit that comes down the shadow of the post there uh, and it will come down here as well. It's gonna look better in 1080, so let's change that back. Go to Preferences, Screen Configuration, click Configure, Screens, HDMI, Resolution, and we're looking at 1920 by 1080. Tick on that, and click OK. There you go, so that's what I would do pretty much every time I put Raspberry Pi OS on. What I could do now is take a backup image of that, so I could copy that to another SD card, and I could do that with SD card copier. So copy from device. If you pop another uh, SD card or USB device in there, you can then copy that to that other SD card, or you can use something like WinDisk Imager uh, on a Windows computer, or GNOME disks on an Ubuntu computer, which will then create a backup of that operating system, which you can then write back to an SD card, and it will come back just like this with all your changes applied. Anyway, I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.